Welcome back, Jenki. We are so glad you are here. And if you listened to last week's episode, well, I hope you did. If you haven't, I do hope you go back and listen to it because we started a very, very serious conversation uh, around a crisis in veterinary medicine that we are having today. And we were lucky enough to have Dr. Ruth Roberts join us last week. And you got to learn some really interesting information about navigating a cancer diagnosis uh, from Janet. Unfortunately, Janet is not able to join us in today's episode. However, we are continuing the conversation with Dr. Katie Woodley. So again, cultivating a relationship with your veterinarian can be oh so difficult. <laughs> Pam, Janet, and I know this all too well. Once we start down that path, we start learning that there are alternatives to Western medicine, to the traditional uh, veterinary medicine, or even with ourselves, human medicine that's being practiced today, which is very reactive and not very preventative at all. We start getting a lot of resistance. And that's once you learn why, <laughs> it's, it's understandable, but we do need to break through this barrier. So Dr. Katie Woodley is here to continue that conversation with us. And boy, oh boy, does she have some amazing tips for us. Dr. Katie Woodley is an integrative holistic veterinarian who is on a mission to make sure pet parents like you have natural pet treatment options, along with empowering you with holistic medicine education that can help your pets thrive naturally. Really important here, I just want to note that there is a big difference in surviving and thriving. And our goal is not just for our pets to survive. No, no, no. It is for our pets to thrive. So Dr. Katie Woodley's passion for holistic medicine started long before she turned her veterinary career into the natural pet doctor. She actually started her veterinary career in New Zealand, and she was very blessed to go to veterinary school in New Zealand, who happened to fall in love with a Kiwi there, her husband, Ryan. So once they moved back to the States, Ryan developed an autoimmune disease, and that started Dr. Katie's path into holistic medicine. Doctor after doctor after doctor told Dr. Katie and her husband, Ryan, that food didn't matter, that herbs wouldn't work, and that he'd have to be on strong immunosuppressive drugs for life. But as they continued to do their research on their own, they found other people were having success with a more holistic lifestyle. Years later, her husband, Ryan, is doing great without all the harsh immunosuppressive drugs. And her clients are doing incredible because she has introduced holistic medicine into their lives. So again, we're talking about cultivating that relationship between a pet parent and a veterinarian, which can be oh so difficult. Today's conversation, uh, again, Pam and myself get to have with Dr. Katie. Janet was unable to join us, but we do have some really thought-provoking ideas, tips, and tricks in today's episode that you are not going to want to miss because this is such an important topic. As I said last time with Dr. Ruth, please share this episode with any and everyone you can because it is our duty uh, as responsible pet parents to share this information, to enlighten and educate as many as we can, as long as they are willing to take on that responsibility to make their pets' lives as happy and healthy as possible, that we can help. So without further ado, let's get into today's interview with Dr. Katie Woodley. As a pet parent, you face more challenges with your dogs and cats today than ever before in history. What's the best food to feed? How do I prevent illness and help them live longer? Maybe you currently have a pet living with disease or behavioral issues and you need a different approach for success. Welcome to the Pet Health Junkies podcast. We're so happy you're here. Pam Roussel is a holistic health practitioner specializing in holistic health for animals. Janet Cesarini is a healthy pet store owner and advocate for health through nutrition. 
Jessica Fisher is a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Join us as we share our stories, experiences, and all that we've learned to change the way we think about raising our pets. We're breaking it all down and making it simple by sharing how we help pet parents just like you every day. Because when we know better, we can do better. This topic was so important that we had to do multiple episodes (laughs) Um, because as you know, uh, everybody listening, there is a crisis in veterinary. There are multiple crises. Crises? Is that how you say that? In veterinary medicine, um, but one of them is building relationships between patients, um, you know, caregivers, pet caregivers, and our veterinarians. So, Dr. Katie Woodley has been. Um, very gracious. And (laughs) she's got a cat jumping on her back right now. (laughs) But she is joining us today to uh, continue the conversation about cultivating a relationship with your veterinarian. And uh, Janet is not able to join us for this episode. She wishes she could be here. But as you heard in the last episode, she's dealing with some health issues with one of her dogs, and that certainly takes precedence. So Dr. Katie, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. And obviously my, my Kiwi cat wanted to join us too. <laughs> she was more than welcome. I just want to like hug her, you know? <laughs> She's looking right at you, both of you. She normally doesn't do, so that's interesting. <laughs> it is. Aww, you sweetie. I have such a special like place in my heart for black cats. And I don't know why. I've just always been like so drawn to them. Yeah, they're drawn to me too because I grew up with four of them as a kid and now I have three and we didn't expect any. (laughs) So yeah, I just attract black cats. (laughs) Well, funny um, little side story really quick and we'll get started. When I lived in Virginia, um, I had a tiny little house in a not so great neighborhood, but I had a feral colony that I was caring for. I got them all to and I was, you know, feeding them and everything. Literally, I want to say the most I had at one time, and it was hard because <laughs> it was hard to know for sure. I want to say it was around 18 cats. Literally every single one was black. Oh, Wow. Like I, people would come over and like, I, I remember specifically this one lady came over who was, uh, we were having a meeting for a, um, a, an animal rescue that I was, I was part of. And she was like, well, there's a lot of gen- genetic diversity here. <laughs> and I, was like, I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we have that in common. We attract black cats into our lives. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> But um, Dr. Katie, so you are a practicing veterinarian, and um, as as our listeners know, we talked to doc- Dr. Ruth um, about this as well. First of all, um, there are way more patients, meaning animals, that than the number of veterinarians we currently have in the United States can even keep up with. Um, so that's a crisis in itself, and then. You know, we obviously, as pet parents, we need to find that balance between being respectful because obviously you have knowledge and education that we don't, and we need to understand that and appreciate that and be respectful of that. But also there are many veterinarians that, you know, will not go outside of their bubble to understand where a pet parent is coming from if they are doing their own research. So there's a, there's a, there's a really like fine line there that we need to find this balance. So, you know, being able to have a good relationship with your veterinarian is so critically important. Mm -hmm. And so many of us just don't have it and we need to figure out ways to get there. Um, So we're hoping that you can help us kind of navigate that a little bit. (laughs) Mm, Yeah, it's, it's a hard place. And, you know, I've, I've been there personally on the human side with my husband getting sick. And that was the start of like my integrative path on vet medicine. And, 
you know, essentially being laughed at when we asked about does yeah. food matter? What about this, these different things? And yes, you know, pretty much just being told like those don't work. You're <laughs> ridiculous for even looking at that. And so that was something that I've always carried with me because I was essentially a new graduate at that time in the vet world and remembering how that felt, I've carried that. And so one of the big missions for my practice is making sure like to understand and come from a place like from my heart that we're all, we're all on different places of our journey, whether it's a pet parent, whether it's a veterinarian. And this is something where, you know, when we look at it that way, it's a lot easier to come from a place of understanding and empathy for that person. And so this is for like the vets that, and I've worked with vets like this, and it's also why I've changed veterinary clinics that I've worked in because the way I practice did not resonate. And this is something to keep in mind too. And I know it can't, you can't always be, there are some people probably listening to this that don't have access to other vets. But if you do, this is where it's really important to find a vet that at least they're respectful and open to hearing about like your side and what you're doing. And if you're in a place where you feel like you're put into a corner, that you're not being respected, that you can't have an open conversation, that you have to hide certain treatments or what you're feeding or things like that. If you're able to find a veterinar another veterinarian, I highly recommend interviewing vets before you even go to that practice or interviewing the staff. Sometimes you can't always get the veterinarian unless you pay like for a little bit of their time for an interview. Um, so that's always something to ask about. Um, and then that way you can ask them, how do they feel about vaccinations? How do they feel about pet diets? What are the requirements for going and seeing them? You know, what are some of the practices that they have? Are you able to be with your pet during, you know, blood draws or, you know, if they need an ultrasound? Those are some really important questions to ask. So you're setting yourself up for success before you even get to that practice and be like super disappointed. So interview, and I have people that interview me too, you know, and I think that's really important because I'm not for everyone and that's okay. And that's where I'm grateful. There's other people too that can help pet parents. But I think that's really, really important. Like if you have the opportunity to find someone else that fits better with you, a hundred percent, like you don't have to be stuck there. Now I know that's not for everyone, but that's a little tip that's worked for a lot of like friends I have for myself with human doctors and who I also partner with for veterinary care for, for my patients and my own, my own pets too, just so I feel more comfortable knowing that the care I'm receiving is in alignment with how I practice and also mm -hmm. what I recommend and want for my for my own care my pet's care yeah it it it, it absolutely if you can <laughs> if you have access because there are some places where they're just you know small towns they have one yep. vet if they have one vet <laughs> you're <Yes>. lucky <laughs> and I, oh go ahead i was gonna say i think in those situations so for people that don't have access, this is really important that you have a team of veterinarians and you're also, you're empowering yourself with knowledge and education. This is where Google can be really helpful and the internet is a powerful place to be. Obviously it has its downsides. We shouldn't take everything on online for the truth, but this is where a lot of my practice has shifted too, because I physically can't handle the amount of people coming to me on a one-on-one -on -one setting. And so yeah. a lot of, especially integrative or holistic veterinarians are doing more of like group trainings and bringing programs together to empower pet parents with a lot of the knowledge where you can actually do a lot of the things yourselves in terms of creating diets. Like if something goes wrong, like are there quick things that you can do using natural remedies that are safe? that you can implement first and maybe avoid having to go to the ER or worry about waiting for that vet visit that's maybe like two months down the road and you're sitting there watching your pet get sick. So this is where having a team and changing the way that we actually approach pet care is really important and becoming a thing of the future really, because I'm just seeing so many other veterinarians practice this way where we bring people in, we teach them how to empower themselves and give them the tools 
And then we're able to support them through like Q and A's and weekly talks and private communities and support them. So when things do arise, you are not left to figure it out on your own. You now have someone to support you and help you. So, you know, you're not, you don't feel alone. You're not guessing. You're not going to that Facebook group and hopefully like the thing this person, this random person told you works and doesn't create harm. So I, I see that as the new like wave of veterinary medicine in the future going forward to help people with the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, you know, personal accountability is something that we didn't really get to talk a lot about with Dr. Ruth, but she did bring up. Um, and I think, you know, it's just a, a huge societal problem that we have that where we don't have personal accountability for ourselves and that has spilled over um, into our pets. So the more we can adjust our thinking and create that personal accountability, whether you start with yourself or your pet um, and learn more. And I mean, there's, there's so much out there that you can learn. And, um, I know there are so many things like you were just saying that we can actually do at home with our pets and we don't necessarily have to even go into the veterinarian's office. Like it, it, just the other day, Kim wasn't feeling good. My dog wasn't feeling good. She, um, was throwing up and then she had diarrhea and I'm like, okay, I obviously know like if this, if I can't get this under control within about a day, then yes, I do need to contact my vet, especially with, you know, the throwing up. I do need to contact my veterinarian, but right now there are things I can do. I, I, I fasted her and gave her, um, just goat's milk and then just bone broth. And, um, I was also doing some other things with some, you know, Animalio GI Joe, and I added some slippery elm into the, the bone broth and literally within, you know, 24 hours. Okay. She, she didn't throw up anymore and her stool started fir firming up. So I'm like, okay, I know I'm good. That is a trip to the veterinarian that by the way, this veterinarian who is also, you know, can't get to all of their clients. They don't, they don't need that. If you know, it's, it's yes. one of those like mind shifts that you're helping yourself and you're also helping your veterinarian by not overloading them with things they just, there was no need to go in, right? Well, and here's the thing too, a lot of times, especially in that situation, you know, a lot of vets will fit in an emergency or mm -hmm. do their best to, and usually that means like dropping off the pet because mm -hmm. then they'll be in between appointments. And I've mm -hmm. been there, you know, 12 hour shifts that extend into like essentially a 20 hour shift. Mm -hmm. And you're just bouncing between rooms, you're fitting in animals that are being dropped off and you're doing the best that you can. And this is also though, where you tend to reach for what's the quickest remedy that we know how to treat this. This is like metronidazole. It's going to be your medications that aren't necessarily fixing the problem or what the, you know, you don't have time to go through a new diet plan for that person, right? You're like, here, this'll, this'll fix the symptom and give you relief the fastest. And that way you can be okay and feel okay about your pet. Whereas, like you just said, it's really important to know what are some of these first aid remedies that we have on hand? Because I know for myself and every single person here at some point and multiple times throughout our lives, we'll have GI upset, <laughs> you know, vomiting, diarrhea. It will happen to all of us at some point. Yeah. If it already hasn't, like, wow, great. But <laughs> do you go to the doctor every time? You don't, right? Usually what we do is just what you said, like, Jessica, you fast you have a bland diet, you rest the gut, we can use things like slippery elm, you know, there's homeopathy remedies you can use. Mm -hmm. And then you slowly work back into that diet. And if the problem continues, then we have to go, okay, well, what's mm -hmm. triggering that? What's causing this, this symptom that we're seeing? And we can work out the root imbalance. And that's where it's helpful to have someone to partner with to do that. Mm -hmm. But this is so helpful, because not only is the number one thing I hear is vets are in it for the money. Like, we want you to be able to fix your pets and like not have to come in in a, in a worry and all stressed out. Like mm -hmm. they truly want your pets to feel their best. 
And I think if you can save a $500 emergency bill, you utilizing a $5 bottle of slippery elm and a fast that's free, like that is amazing. And so I think it is, exactly. there is an accountability level because I feel like there is, there is a rising level of like anger and like attack on veterinarians. And I look at, you know, one of the big things I see too is like the prescription diets. I'm not a big fan of prescription diets. And people always say, well, they're, they're making the money from that. And yes, the bigger corporations are making the money. Me personally, as a veterinarian, when I used to recommend those at the beginning of my career, I didn't make anything off of those. You don't make any, like if you're on production, yeah, that's a real thing. You're making nothing. The clinic's making that. And so your personal veterinarian, all they want is to help your pet feel better. And they're stressed out. They're burned out. There's not enough staff. We have people quitting and retiring left and right. And if we don't look at a different way of medicine moving forward and also take a couple deep breaths and also recognize where there is this element of stress in, in, the, in the vet clinics, like if we walk in there and start yelling at people because we're upset and mad, you're going to lose more staff because these people, especially your front receptionists and your vet techs, they're getting paid minimum wage and they're working really long hours and they are getting it in the neck every single day. And so they're doing their best. They are there for your pets because they care so deeply. So we have to we have to take a deep breath and have some empathy for the people in the veterinary profession, whether it's your conventional vets, whether it's holistic and integrative, because there are a lot of pets to take care of and there's not enough time in the day for us to take care of them, but also to take care of ourselves so we can take care of your pets. Mm -hmm. And so this is why I love that you said the accountability piece like we can control how much we learn. We can control how we show up in life. We can control whether or not we yell at someone or we <laughs> shut our mouth and we think about it before we actually start, you know, going at someone and we think about, well, okay, what's the flip side of this, right? Maybe there is a sick and dying animal. Maybe they had to rush to surgery. Maybe they just got like a hit by car animal that will take precedence over your itchy pet. And you would hope for the same if you were in that situation too. So I think it's really important that we start shifting the way that we think about things and broadening our approach and just coming with more empathy, especially with vet medicine, because it's just, it's, it's, it's rough out there. It's really rough <laughs> out there, especially being on social media, you know, mm -hmm. it's people, we just need to be more kind to each other. And I think that will help tremendously too with the situation we're in. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We all want happy, healthy pets and we all care deeply about the animals that are in our lives, whether you're a pet parent or whether you're working in, a, in the veterinary industry. I mean, you wouldn't be there if you didn't love pets, you know? So obviously that is our common ground. We can, always come back and agree on that. And then going from there, it's, it's like you said, being respectful and trying to see what it's like from their perspective. What did they just walk out of? You know, maybe they just had to put a pet down. You don't yeah. know what people are going through. Um, and so having just being kind and compassionate and caring and being open-minded and listening a lot of times gets us a lot further than speaking, <laughs> just stepping like back. God and gave us two ears. Two and one ears. Mouth. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Two eyes, two ears, one mouth. <laughs> so we should spend more time listening and reading and learning than, you know, speaking <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I think that's really important too, Pam, though, because the hardest thing, it was, it's just crazy. My practice has shifted obviously with my, with my business now, but working in like the conventional or, you know, being the integrative vet and conventional yeah. going from, you know, a euthanasia and you're crying with the client and you're, you know, you're putting, you're helping this pet pass that you've helped. Like you saw him as a puppy, all the, mm -hmm. like I get goosebumps thinking about that connection that you have. And then you're walking into a new client with a new puppy and that emotional change that you have to make. And here's the thing. Most veterinarians are not extroverts. 
most of us are like introverted and we're like so connected to the animal. And so many people as veterinarians, they don't realize like we have to talk to people. <laughs> like that's, that's not why they go into vet medicine. Mm-hmm. And so being able to have these drastic, huge, like emotional shifts, almost every single like consultation, email, phone call that you have is such a huge stress on so many veterinarians. And this is also part of like the burnout. It's part of the high suicide rate that we have, um, you know, people shifting away from the vet profession because of the emotional kind of craziness that you have to go through is just a part of like normal practice every day. So when we add in, you know, 15 minute consults back to back, you're there for three hours extra. You also have people coming in and yelling at you and threatening to sue you if you don't take care of their pet and blaming you for only caring about money. I think that's where that empathy piece and also just you know, it can't, it is stressful. Don't get me wrong, but taking a few deep breaths and thinking about that other side of what could be going on in that situation. It's like what they say, right? When you're driving in your car and someone cuts you off, like, do you go crazy with road rage and like try to run them down? Or do you go, maybe that person's trying to get to the hospital, their wife's in labor, or maybe there's someone like Mm -hmm. they need, you know, there's something going on and it completely shifts your response to that situation. And so I think that's important for, for people when they do go to the vet. Oh, hi, Kim. <laughs> oh, are you feeling better? Yes, she is. Yeah, it's good. She is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a yes. <laughs> right. That was fantastic. I mean, so here's the other side of like the the situation too, because I hear this a lot from, from my clients who have to, you know, we do the holistic side of medicine. So, you know, they still need to work with a veterinarian and usually it's a very conventional veterinarian. And so the question is, how do I go in and tell them, like, I want to feed a raw food diet. I don't want the medications like the Apoquil and the steroids and the things like that. I don't want the vaccinations. And this is where what I find is really helpful when, because that partnership is really important and it's stressful for both. I know on the other side of the table, someone comes in already like ready to fight or grumpy or closed off. I feel that energy. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing I always say that you can do when you go into that vet clinic is, especially if they say, I want you to take away the, like, I want you to use this prescription. As long as your pet is somewhat stable and safe, you can always say, like, what, what I'd love to do, I appreciate what we want to do. Um, what I want, what I need to do to become more comfortable is just do a little bit of research. So I just need 24 hours. And is it okay if I get back to you? So it's the same with like prescription diets. It's the same with like these medications, because honestly, what's 12, 24 hours for the majority of like these chronic health issues. And what it does is it gives you a space rather than feeling like you need to shut down or have an argument with that veterinarian. And two, on the flip side, also, if you know that there's a wellness exam coming up, being ready with like, okay, let me bring some paperwork and like Wasava vaccine guidelines and just be like, you know, I've been reading about this and I'd love to hear your thoughts about, can we do some vaccine titers? Because, you know, Finn's had vaccines his entire life and, you know, I read about this in the vaccine guidelines for veterinarians that we can do titers and just see if they're protected. And so having that script ready, having that documentation to that veterinarian should be following can also help alleviate some of that stress of that conversation because Mm -hmm. we don't like conflict. None of us like conflict, right? And it doesn't have to be conflict. It can be a two-way conversation where you're including the veterinarian in that conversation rather than just pushing away their entire opinion and just saying, no, you're stupid. Like, I don't believe in that. You're going to create vaccinosis or harm my pet. Instead, you're having the, yes, I can understand. This is where I'd like to go. Um, Would this work for what we want to achieve? Um, And then if they don't know, like how to do a titer or things like that, this is where also having your team of veterinarians to partner with and ask those questions. So you can walk away and say, I decline those. 
and I'm going to do some more research. I'll let you know. I'll keep you in the loop. But I think there's some other like companies that maybe can do these titers. But this is where it's really helpful to have other people to ask those questions because most most pet parents are not going to know what to say or where to go if their veterinarian does not do what they're asking. Right. And that's the stressful part. So yeah. that's where having a team of vets can be helpful to be able to navigate that space. Yeah. And I think it's also important to re- just to remind pet parents, like you are the, you are the guardian, you are the final say so. And I've been bullied by a vet. It is not pretty and it's very uncomfortable. And I think pet parents just kind of shut down a lot of times and they're, you know, it's like, you forget everything you were going to ask. You feel intimidated because they're in the white coat with the, you know, the degree on the wall and everything. I think people forget that it's okay to ask questions and you don't have to agree on everything that they're proposing. And I think it's also okay to say, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable with that today. Let me go home and do some research. Or I, I really, um, I appreciate your input. Um, I'm not comfortable with that. And, you know, I think it's okay to, to for people to know that they can say those things. Just be respectful in how you say it. You know, mm-hmm. and if you don't resonate with that particular vet or what, you don't feel comfortable in their clinic, like you said, that energy, sometimes you can just feel it. Then don't go back. You know, it's okay. Go to somebody else. Go research. <laughs> find another a vet that you can check out, you know, or get referrals from other people that people that they've used that they like. Um, this day and age, thank goodness, we have so much information at our fingertips. And there's websites like the AHVMA and there's review sites, you know, like Yelp and, and places like that and Google reviews and read those and see what kind of experiences people have had at those places. You know, because that can be very helpful for you if you have a certain mindset or philosophy that you like to embrace and, you know, regarding your pet's care. And if you know that going ahead, of, you know, ahead of the time that this this vet is completely the opposite, well, that might save you a little frustration. And money. <laughs> and money. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Keep searching, you know? Yeah. And two, really quick, is that a lot of times these practices have multiple vets. Mm -hmm. And they're going to practice different. I was very different from the other veterinarians from my first practice. And I tended to be the one that would get the cats. Yeah, I was the cat, like the cat vet. I, of course, love seeing dogs too. But also too, I was the one that was more, I was the integrative doctor. So even though we did like TPLOs and there was a doctor there that would do like steroid injections on every pet. Like this is where when you book a consultation, like you can ask, is there a veterinarian that loves seeing the cats or, you know, is really good at handling the cats? And is there a technician? And it was interesting. So I, we'd have a, people that would request appointments for myself and a certain technician because they knew, like mm-hmm. they knew them, but also too, they knew that we were really good with cats. Mm-hmm. And so like if we needed a blood draw, like we were really good at getting blood draws, very like stress-free. And so that's another question to ask mm-hmm. at the time of like, if you're going to a new veterinarian, or even if you're looking to potentially like, you just don't feel that right energy with a current veterinarian at a practice, see if there's other vets, like ask the staff, like who would yeah. be a good one? You know, I'm a little bit more like, holistic or I want to learn more about this. Are there any vets in this practice that that's kind of like their special interest? Yeah. You don't have to be certified, but that's yeah. another great way to make sure that your needs are also being met and you feel more comfortable when you have to go into those situations to get your pet's care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One other thing that I have found uh, works for me, <laughs> um, and this is actually because my husband is he, he loves talk. He loves talking to everybody. Um, but the, the last veterinarian we had before we moved here, it worked really, really well that we just talked to her like a normal person. And we asked her about her 
And we asked her about her life and she would tell us like how business was going and, you know, that she couldn't afford to bring on another veterinarian and, but she wanted to take a vacation. We talked to her about her vacations and like having that. And I understand that's not for everybody and maybe not even every veterinarian is going to want to talk to you that way, but it helped so much because she was a conventional veterinarian. But when I walked, when she walked in the door and she saw me, she like, could put her guard down and say, you know better than I do, do what you're going to do. Like, <laughs> and, and I mean, she's literally said that to me. She's was like, you know, you're, I, this cat should have died six years ago, whatever you're doing, you're, you're doing like do it. And, um, so just talking to them like people, <laughs> they're, they're people. We are people. <laughs> we have <laughs> emotions and <laughs> like doing things too that other people like doing. I, and I like yeah. that, you know, I, I tend to be pretty, I would consider personable, but also very like open and, and enjoy like sharing like what works for me or what I like doing. And I think a lot of vets, you know, keeping in mind too, so many of us are are introverted. And so having someone come in and be able to like allow you to let that guard down and mm -hmm. have a normal conversation and also see that care and feel that empathy from that other person too goes so far for, you know, even if they don't know anything about like holistic or integrative, it's there, they'll be more open to seeing and hearing how things are going and more open to saying like, I have no idea, but you know, I'm here for whatever you need me for. Um, mm -hmm. And I, th I think that's so, so important because I feel like so many times I read on social media or, you know, the comments and it's like, it's almost like forgotten that we're humans and we have emotions and some of the things that you, you get thrown at you, you're like, wow, wait, I, I feel this. Like, I'm not just a business. Like, this is actually me reading this. And, you know, I think that's really important to remember because there are days where I do want to quit. You know, it can be really, really hard. And mm -hmm. I think that's we don't need any more people to quit this profession. We need <laughs> all the help we can get, which yeah. is really important. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it. Like I said, it, it, it has gotten me pretty far because, um, I, you know, I, she was a conventional veterinarian and I would see her, hear her talk to other clients and it was just boom, 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 you know, annual vaccines and buy this, um, kibble that I have behind the counter and, and by the way, they need their flea and tick meds and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, she walked in the room with me and she's like, Hey, <laughs> I'm like, Hey, how are you? <laughs> um, and so it was just like, do what you're going to do. And I know I, she already knew she walked in the door It walked in the door and she's like, okay, I know we're not doing the vaccines. Um, anything else going on? What, what's going on? Are we doing okay? Yep. We're doing okay. We just need our annual checkup and blood work. And she, she was good with that. And, um, but there is, you know, there still is that respect that you need to have, um, and, and, and to be respectful. And one story that I, I wanted to share, um, really quickly is that even with this same veterinarian, she had a very high turnover with her technicians. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they said she is very tough to work for. She's very mm -hmm. demanding, you know, all the things. And one time I took my dog in, um, she very quickly onset, I wasn't sure if it was an ear infection or she had something in her ear. She was just like ravenously scratching at her ear. So immediately got her in and the tech wanted to do the swab. And I'm like, wait, I don't know if she has a foreign object in her ear before you stick anything in her ear. I just want mm. it to be looked at. And like, I had to argue with this technician three times she was trying to, to swab the ear. And I'm like, even if it's not going to cause any problems, I'm telling you I'm uncomfortable with it. And of course she angrily left the room to go get the vet. And you know, the, the vet walked in and she's like, it's okay. I'll take care of it. And I'm like, I was getting angry. And I'm like, Jessica, calm down. <laughs> but still, you know, finding that balance and being respectful, but standing your ground and saying, I'm not comfortable with this. 
we need to we need to find a way to move forward from here that i just think people need to be respectful but also find their confidence and confidence i think is found through knowledge so learn like mm -hmm. th that's the best thing we can do yeah there's actually a loop with your confidence congruity clarity and so learning will always make you more confident it's when we don't understand something and we're not able to explain it or, you know, and stand up for what you believe in. If like when you go to the vet, if you don't truly know what a titer is, but you've heard it should be what you do, like you're going to have a lot harder time advocating for it, especially if you're going to a veterinarian that doesn't even know what a titer is. Mm -hmm. So that's where understanding what it is as best as possible so you can be the best advocate for your pet is really important and yes you're not going to be a veterinarian you know i you know there there are certain situations too where i feel like you know the nutrition side is a there's a big gap in that knowledge in the veterinarian side because we're just not taught it and so unless you go through th further training certifications things like that and you go deeper we're just, you're not going to be as knowledgeable as a lot of these pet parents. Like I am just amazed at the knowledge of people. Like I always learn from clients. I love hearing what people have to say. Cause I'm like, wow, I have no idea what the heck that is. Let me go and like research it sometimes, you know? And, but I think too, it's, it all comes down to, you know, more education, more knowledge, and then that creates confidence, but also to like, there are different types of personalities. And if you have, this is where certain people, whether you're a vet or not, if you are scared by another person's questioning because maybe they don't fully understand and they're afraid that they will not look as knowledgeable. So on the vet side, this happens quite frequently where they get their back up or there's an ego situation, right? How dare you question me? I'm a veterinarian. And that that's very off-putting to pet parents, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're hearing that kind of verbiage coming out, this is where taking that deep breath and like, is it even worth responding to that? Is it going to change the situation? Usually it's not because that person is not in a place where they're going to be open to receiving what you even have to yes. say. Like I've been in that situation personally, and it's something where it's okay to just take a step back. And once again, if they're pushing something on you, being the advocate for your pet and just saying, you know, I'm not comfortable or I need to think about this and I'll get back to you and you can leave the, the clinic. Like, do not feel like you should be forced to do something to your pet that makes you feel uncomfortable. Like intuition is so powerful. And I think that's a huge I think I see a lot of pet parents that get really stressed when they go, oh my God, I did those vaccines and I just didn't know what to do. And just take a breath and go, you know, I feel really uncomfortable. I just need to research this. And that's all you have to say. Mm -hmm. And then that way you don't leave the clinic being like, oh my God, did I just wreck my pet's health? Like, I don't know what happened. And you give your space, like yourself space to think about it. And if your veterinarian will not respect that on the other side, this is where if you're able to find another vet in the practice or at a different clinic, very important. Otherwise, if you can't, because you're in a small town and it's only vet for like, you know, six hours and you need them, this is where you gave yourself space rather than reacting and becoming disrespectful back to them and cr aggravating the situation, potentially being fired as a client. Like, cause mm -hmm. that can happen you know? And so that way you go home, you think about it, you come up with other solutions, you tap into your resources, you grow your knowledge base. And then that way, when you call back and you talk to them the next day, or whenever that is, when you feel comfortable, you're able to have a more calm conversation and you're more knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So that way you have additional resources you can provide, links, things like that, that you can share. Because anytime you hear, I found this on Google as a veterinarian, you're like, well, which which part of Google, like, is this just like, you know, I don't know where, like Google's really helpful, but which part of Google did you find this? You know, like, it's like, so yeah, I think I that's that. really helpful for people too, is just, you know, it's rather than yelling and getting upset, give yourself space, go and learn, and then come back with a solution or better questions in a more calm space. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think sometimes just giving, giving the pet parents the actual words to say is helpful because they just like blank, you know? So just as simple as thank you for, for your input, but I'm not comfortable with that today. I want to do some more research, you know, giving them just that canned speech right there can be very helpful. It's empowering because at least they can say that, you know? Yeah. I always tell people to practice it yes. before they go. <laughs> because yeah. it's when it when you're in that situation, it's like, oh, I'm like fumbling. What did I say? What was I supposed to say? Oh, yeah. Like, no, exactly. thank you. No, I don't want this. No. And then it just like escalates and you're yeah. like, oh my God, I completely botched that. Right. <laughs> so practicing it before you go, writing it down, however you learn, like it's not a silly yeah. thing to do. It can be really no. helpful in a stressful situation. Yeah. And hopefully you don't even need to use it. Correct. Right. Correct. I think yeah. also as women, because most most people who are caregivers for pets who are in, researching, searching, we're women. Like that's our demographic is women, right? Um, especially for us, it can be very difficult uh, to say what you need to say, to get thoughts out, to, to not become overly emotional. And it can be very important to remember that no is a complete sentence. <laughs> like, mm. no. And can I just share that it also helps to cry? <laughs> it does. It does. I, I'm living proof. Y'all, it works. <laughs> just cry. If you can't say anything, just cry. <laughs> just cry. <laughs> just cry. It's true. That's if, actually it's a really man, true. if it's a man vet, it's they don't really know what to do with a crying woman. They're just, just like, uh... <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, a lot of times that, I mean, here's the thing. You feel like crying anyways, right? When you're in that situation. Yes. Yes. So just like, let it go. Let and it cry. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. We all feel emotions. Your vet may even cry with you mm -hmm. because they're probably stressed out too. And I mean, the number of times I've cried with clients, not usually because of like this type of situation, but it's, it's something where like everyone is a human and it yes. brings it back to to that element where emotions are okay. Tears are okay. They're real. It's yes. really important to like yeah. release that also. And mm -hmm. if that gives you more time and space to, you know, and they're going to see that you are emotional too. Mm -hmm. So rather than guessing, like, how is this person feeling and trying to read what like, isn't coming out of your mouth potentially, they're able to see like, wow, this is actually really important to them. You know, you're right. Mm -hmm. Let's, we don't need to do this today. Like this yeah. would be what, what I would recommend in terms of getting, you know, fluffy feeling better. Um, but if you need space, like most humans will recognize that and allow that space to occur. So you're more comfortable and you, it gives you that time to think about things mm -hmm. and, and come back to them. And I think honestly, a lot of people will respect that more versus yelling, screaming, things like, like that doesn't usually work. Like no. ever. I don't know when the last time at work, to be honest. It's just not fun for no, anyone. It just up. You know, everybody it does. Comes defensive. Yeah. Yeah. You can go home and yell and scream. Yeah. I think, you know, I think going home and beating pillows and like rage dancing and shaking are helpful, you yeah. know, but yeah, not, not at your vet. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, usually not helpful. No. Usually not. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> True. Well, Dr. Katie, thank you so much for being here and for talking about this with us. I, I do think, you know, it's, it, hopefully it'll start changing, but right now it's, it's a, it's a big problem. And, um, the more we can help people navigate these situations, the better off their pets are going to be. Cause I don't, I don't know about y'all. I am just here for the pets. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it, it was funny that you said like most vets are introverts. Um, you get into it because you want to work with animals. And that's why I got into dog training. And it was very quick that I realized I'm not training dogs. I'm training people. And I'm like, Oh, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I, I think too, like it, I actually, for the most part, there are some days, you know, um, for the reasons we talked about, I actually, I really do enjoy working with the people that genuinely like want to better their pets care. And mm -hmm. 
like we are an amazing collection of people. Like I always say, it's like a movement and it's so neat to be part of something that is, I mean, we're a minority still a hundred percent, but it's just neat to see people come together and support one another and see that in like the communities that we're creating and just to create a safe space for people also and the caring space and getting to know people on like a different side and getting to know their pets. And it's not just about the pet anymore. It's about like making sure that we as humans have that space to also grow because if we're not growing and, you know, living our best lives either, like, then why are we here? Right. Mm -hmm. There's so much, there's so much amazingness out here and pets just amplify it. You know, they bring that, that grace, that love, that beauty. And I mean, there, you can't get mad for very long at a pet that's done something wrong. Right. We were talking about cats inappropriately urinating. Like you can't even get mad at them that long. Like, you may, like, cause they're just such beautiful beings, but they also bring us all together as humans. Mm -hmm. And so if we can learn to grow and adapt and just have empathy for one another also, that's where like the beauty in the world is. And seeing that now and working with people in a different like perspective versus just like vet clinic situation that's something I didn't expect would happen. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it is something that I have to bring myself some days to like ground myself and come back to that. But there's so much beauty out there and so much beautiful people like yourselves. Like I would have never met if we had never gone down this mission, never like had these harder conversations, never wanted to grow and educate mm -hmm. ourselves and empower ourselves so that we could go down this path of helping our pets. And I think that's something that's, that's really, really neat. And I hope people don't forget that because that's what it's all about, right? Is doing, doing the best we can coming together, supporting one another and just being grateful for all this beauty that's around us. And our pets will obviously bring those opportunities to learn and grow because that's why they're in our lives. Yeah. So we just have to be ready for the lessons and then take those opportunities, good and bad, because we learn so much on both sides. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's how I know I still have so much to learn because of Romeo and Sissy. <laughs> it's okay. My cats teach me every day. Every <laughs> so, day. Every, every day. day. They're reminding me. <laughs> like, you know, it's, <laughs> but that it's good to see that, you know, it's, and that's the thing. Like if we're, if we were living these comfortable lives and there wasn't anything bad happening, why would you change anything? Mm -hmm. Like I look at, you know, we've had three pets with cancer. My husband developed autoimmune disease. You know how easy it would have been like to say, screw this life. Like we're just, we get all the, like the bad things. Why would I even show up and do more? Why would I even try? Like life just sucks. You know, mm -hmm. how awful would that be? It's yeah. a bad place. Yeah. It is a very there's bad no, place. It's a very no dark point. place. Yeah. And there's, there's so much more. Like I wouldn't have created my business if Ryan, my husband hadn't gotten sick mm -hmm. and I didn't have to sit on the other end of the table being laughed at by the doctor. Yeah. I mean, that's happened multiple times. <laughs> so, but <laughs> that's the thing. Like I would never wish autoimmune disease on anyone, right? But it's what we do with those challenges that can help us. And so if someone here is currently going through a challenge with like their veterinarian, I want to, I want to ask them, like, take a step back and think about like, what is this lesson trying to teach me for myself? Is it more patience? Do I need more empathy? Mm -hmm. Like maybe I just need to be more resourceful and like how I learn. And maybe there's something here that I can help myself or there's another veterinarian that I need to be in touch with that hasn't come into my light yet. Yeah. That's how so many people find me. Cause they're like, I had to go down a different path. And all of a sudden you came up in a search. I know that's the same with like Pam yes, and it's like exactly. that was brought to you because of the challenges you went through. So I think that's a very important lesson to remember, especially through like the darkness that touches all of us at times. There's a, there's a lesson to grow. And when we recognize that, that's, that's where, that's where the growth lives and where like magic, that's where, that's where the magic life. happens. That's exactly. Where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, well, you're so calm and it's so <laughs> most so of the time. Pleasure- <laughs> Pam's probably seen me on the other side. <laughs> it's so pleasurable to talk to you because I, in my mind, I'm just like, <laughs> and then I get on with you, and both of you, Pam too, though Pam can, can get kind of crazy at times. But <laughs> I think we all can. I think it's the energy, you know? It's, it's just yeah. like very calm. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> very good energy. But um, Dr. Katie, where can, so I'm on your email list, so I know you send out so much great information. Where can people get this information? How can people find you? Yeah. So you can find us at www.thenaturalpetdoctor.com. Uh, so the natural pet doctor, any like Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Um, and then of course we have group programs to help for exactly this very reason why we're talking today mm-hmm. to really help empower pet parents. So you have the support and guidance, especially if you're walking wanting a more integrative or holistic approach for, for your pets. So you can always reach out and see if anything that we have available is something that will support you and help you. Otherwise we have a ton of free content that we release um, every single week, just to make sure that you do have the tools and knowledge to help guide you through this. Awesome. Well, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, I know Pam, you do too. (laughs) Absolutely. There's so much good information. And I know I'm like, you're always going live and, and doing all the things like you're there to help people and that shows and we appreciate it. So thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you for so doing much. all you do. Like it's inspiring. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, we're all in it together and which is so important. Mm-hmm. So thank you. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. We enjoyed having you. It was, it was our pleasure. And guys, um, please do go follow Dr. Katie, check out all of her videos, um, get on her email list because that is some really great information. And until next week, um, make sure to give your pets some extra love from us. Absolutely. Thank (laughs) you. all All right. Bye guys. Bye.